Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, sorry we haven't had a lot of news videos the last couple of days. It's been a bit of a crazy week. Uh, just a lot of kid activities here as we wind down to the end of the school year. But we're getting a little bit back on track because I got some breaking news. Well, not really breaking news, but important news for you today that we're going to discuss. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to remind you we are giving away two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League to kick off Prime Gaming Fest. All you have to do is go down to the pinned comment or down in the description, click on the link. Uh, and I wish everyone luck. We'll be announcing the winners at the start of Prime Gaming Fest at June 9th at 10 or 9 a.m. 9 a.m. CT on June 9th. Hope to see all you guys there for Prime Gaming Fest. Uh, and let's get into uh, what we have to talk about in regards to this, because this news is one that Nintendo has been doing for a while, but it's really interesting what they're trying to do. And that is, Nintendo trying to stop cheaters. There have been a lot of cheating that has happened across their software. Mario Kart cheaters, Smash Bros. cheaters, and really the one that happens, I think, more frequently than most, Splatoon 2. And it's sort of important to do something about cheating when you have Splatoon 3 coming out. And a lot of the ways that various companies deal with cheating end up being a little bit hurty, hurtful towards, like, normal consumers so let's just dive into what nintendo is doing here by checking out this article on nintendo life so it says nintendo files a patent to combat online cheating and software modification so it says nintendo is always filing patents for all sorts of ideas but they don't always see the light of day this latest one might be a bit different though this new one will target cheaters by attempting to identify any software modifications this would be achieved by implementing an attestation program that continues to check for possible code changes to the software. The technology described implements attestation programs that employ code reuse techniques. In particular, the technology relates to auto-generating attestation programs for, among other aspects, detecting whether a program has been modified. In one non-limiting example, the technology uses a tool that scans a software program, example, a video game, code for usable code sequences. The tool can automatically combine code sequences to generate a large number of, of attestation programs of different varieties, example, memory checks and hashing. The same patent further notes how attestation tools are particularly handy for online multiplayer and competitive play over the internet and mentions how unfair advantages result in games may be less satisfying for all users. These modifications can also come with certain security risks. Such cheating is prevalent where the gaming environment is extended to gaming, particularly multiplayer gaming, over the internet. In particular, users are able to modify software in a way that enables them to have advantages over other players on different systems across a multiplayer game. These unfair advantages result in the game being much less satisfying to the user, thereby affecting the overall human user experience and interaction in the game. Moreover, such modifications to the game can create certain security risks for the game system. So, yeah, they're probably not going to officially announce this, as they note here. Uh, it'll just be something that just simply exists. And uh, it's probably, you know, trying to get out there before Splatoon 3 hits to deal with the, the, the wide swath of cheating that's been going on in Splatoon 2. So this is clearly a very positive thing for Nintendo to explore. And what's notable here is that since this is a software-based anti-cheat, it actually shouldn't impact people dumping their games to PC to emulate. It really shouldn't affect that at all. It also shouldn't affect whether or not people modify their Nintendo Switch hardware and say, want to run custom firmware or uh, other things like that, or want to add other modifications to their hardware. Heck, so maybe someone wants to water cool their Switch for some reason. It shouldn't really impact any of that. So that's really cool. They're not really checking for hardware modifications. This is focusing on software because software is the most prevalent type of cheating out there. In fact, it's pretty hard to catch someone cheating with hardware because you know you have to figure out exactly what the hell they're doing so yeah I, I do think the software cheating is the most easy one to catch because it does involve obviously tampering with code in some way and being able to have some sort of system in place to catch that tampering and thus take care of those players boot them out perma band whatever they got to do uh, is definitely beneficial for the consumer this doesn't mean it can't affect hardware of course because naturally 
If you catch someone cheating, Nintendo could decide, hey, we're just going to brick your Switch, and that's going to be that. Nintendo has done this with Switches, DSs, and other systems in the past. So this isn't beyond Nintendo's scope. And if you are breaking terms of service on the game, which also happens to break the terms of service of the platform, Nintendo does maintain the rights to basically prevent you from using your Switch anymore. So it's well within Nintendo's rights, whether you like it or not. So this is good. This is a positive because nobody likes to play online matches with cheating. And that has been one of the somewhat underbelly conversation leading up to the launch of Splatoon 3 was how Nintendo was going to deal with cheating since it was so prevalent. Like when you went to the upper ranks of Splatoon 2, let's just say it was pretty common, sometimes as much as every other match to run into people who were clearly cheating in some way. Uh, and that sucks because when you're at that highest level of competition, you would like to just play against other people who are also highly skilled and not taking advantage of things that you aren't privy to unless you also cheat. Uh, and while they did catch a number of these cheaters, there was always more, and it wasn't always the best. So Nintendo having a new anti-cheat program in place, one that's more software-based, especially for online multiplayer games, I think it makes a lot of sense. I also like how this isn't really a DRM-style uh, anti-cheat. Like, we have seen a lot of DRM uh, version anti-cheats in the past from a lot of other companies that ultimately were trying to solve multiple things. They're trying to solve uh, cheating and also trying to solve pirating all in one, and Frankly, it ended up just creating a mess of a system for end users, legitimate consumers that bought the game and aren't cheating or having some difficulties just trying to play the game due to that DRM. So Nintendo didn't go that route, thankfully. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, and obviously, Games like Splatoon 3 do have a single-player mode, so you definitely don't want to be like, oh, you must connect online to play, blah, blah, blah. That's just... We need to do an online check, and then our servers will check the code base. No, why can't you just build it into the system, build it into the software, and let the software self-check? And, hey, guess what? Uh, when you connect online, if the code base that exists to check the software is somehow deleted, because I could see, like, a you know someone hacking in, wanting to maybe say, hey, what if I just delete the checker? Uh, well, if that code's missing... They could just say, oh, you're clearly cheating because you modified the code just to get rid of the code checker in the first place. So that's the beauty of playing online is that they can still check the code as you connect. So I think that they're in a very good place here to stop cheating moving forward. This isn't going to be foolproof, by the way. We all know that no matter what anti-cheat systems are put in place, cheaters find a way around it, right? People who are hacking the games find a way around these anti-cheat systems. So it's really just a matter of time before somebody finds a way around this system, but still, if it can greatly reduce the number of cheaters, especially at launch for Splatoon 3, and maybe moving forward, I'm all for it, because I think obviously an anti-cheat built around checking code changes uh, is maybe one of the more clever ideas. In fact, I'm kind of surprised Nintendo's the one to come up with this system, and it hasn't been other major you know, multiplayer games like Call of Duty or something doing something like this. It's Nintendo that came up with the concept, so kind of neat. Do you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. I hope you really enjoyed this video. We'll be back to our normal Prime News episodes on Monday uh, as we get back into a bit of a normal schedule here, uh, an attempt to get back into a normal schedule. Uh, get a busy weekend ahead. Bit, been a busy week. It's going to be a busy month. <laughs> so uh, catch you guys in that next video.